Hey, my name is Alex with 8 Tech, Tech Tutorials, and today I'm going to be showing you how to integrate Slack with Jira. You're going to want to make sure that you're a Jira admin, and you're going to want to make sure you're a Slack admin to your workplace. If you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe, drop a like to the video, and if you have any questions about anything that I cover in this video, let me know in the comment section below. Let's jump into some documentation. Then we'll jump into Slack, then we'll jump into Jira. Let's take a look. All right, so the first place I'm gonna take you to is if you just Google Slack integration with Jira, you're gonna be taken to the documentation that Slack has provided. So you do wanna do this from the Slack side first because it's basically gonna be the easiest way. Now, I am gonna be focusing on Jira Cloud because that's the tool that I have. And so I'm gonna click on this Visit Jira Cloud page in the Slack app directory. And that's essentially going to take me to my Slack. So let me log in real quickly. Okay, so once you log in, it's going to ask you to pick your workplace. I have picked my default workplace that I have. In my case, it's called Aptech. And then from here, you're going to be basically asked to add the permission to your Slack. And so I'm going to add Slack, the application of Jira, to it. I'm going to click Allow. Um, you can go ahead and pause this and kind of read through all, all these things mean to you. And then it's going to ask you, this is probably the most important part, now you're going to connect your Slack with your Jira. And so we're going to go ahead and log in on that. Um, this should authenticate to whatever log account you're logged in to. So, all right, so once you're authenticated, you're going to go back to Slack. And so you'll click on that and it will redirect you. I'm going to open up Slack because I have the application installed on my computer. So I'm going to open that up and I'll be able to see it here. And so now when I come into my Slack channel, you'll notice that I have a now a dedicated Jira app section. And that's pretty much it. From this point, you can essentially start utilizing Slack. And so if you come down to messages, you do get a welcome message, which basically shows you a couple of tips on how to use this, right? So you can click on these Jira slash, slash Jira create. You can type in the title. And then when you hit enter, it'll create an issue in your Jira. You can take actions in the issues in Slack by clicking on the ellipses. You can create a dedicated channel in, in Slack and then you can connect to your Jira project that way. You can get personal notifications, you can manage those notifications. And so let's try some of these out just so that you can kind of see how they work. And so I'm gonna go, I'm gonna just create a, a section here, a channel for Jira updates, just so I can get all the Jira updates. And um, I'll hit create on that. I'm going to skip because I'm not going to add anybody. And so here I'm going to just do slash Jira connect. And it's going to ask me which project I want to connect to. I'm going to just pick whatever one I want. Uh, I'm going to pick this ATT one. It's going to tell me which channel do I want it to be in because I've already made that channel. I'm just going to keep it there and I'm going to click on connect. Okay. So once we've done that, the notification is designed to basically show you when you create something. So I'm going to very just very easily just create a, this is a test for Slack. When I click create here, I'll just click create. And now ATT22 has been created. I'm going to basically switch screens and you'll notice that my ATT22 has been created here on the Slack side. So that's basically, if you're in Jira, it'll push it to Slack. Now, if you're in Slack and you're kind of just, oh, well, this is great. Like I want to do something. So I can do this uh, slash Jira create this is my story from slack enter and it's going to ask me to basically again tell it which project i want to go into what kind of task it wants to be here's a title that i wrote i can do some of the other items fill out some other information i'm okay with these defaults i'm going to click submit and so once i do that it'll you'll notice that i created att-23 and so now if i switch back over here and i go to my i guess my issues would be a good place to go look Here's the ATT-23 that was created from Slack. So that's kind of like the basics. You obviously have a couple more things, right? So make sure you come down to the Jira, come down to messages, and you can see the different things that you can do with respect to this new integration. So I recommend that you take a look at those actions so that you can take a look and see what you can do. So let's see if we can actually see what these actions do. And so I'm gonna go back into my Jira updates channel. I'm gonna click on this ellipses here. And so you can watch, you can comment, you can assign it, you can transition it. So if, this is great. So if you wanted to transition this particular issue, you can transition it from here and you can basically move it to the next status. And so you can do a lot of this stuff now without actually having to leave. 
And so you see that ATT-22 was transitioned to in progress. If I switch back over here, you'll see that it's in to do here, but if I click refresh, my issue is now in progress. So those are just some of the basic configurations that you can do when you integrate your Slack with your Jura. Let me know what you think. I personally don't use it too much. I tend to live in the world of Jura, but if you're like me, I do have Slack open all day and I do have Jura open all day. So maybe there is value for you to have Slack and Jira integrated, but I'd love to hear in the comment section if you like it, if you don't like it, what are your thoughts? I just kind of, I'm really generally just curious of like what you think about this integration between Slack and Jira. Also, make sure you don't pay for it, right? Because this is a free integration that is built out of the box. There are, from what I've seen in the past, other paid integrations. And so you want to make sure you're not paying for your integration with Slack. Obviously, sometimes when you do pay for stuff, you get better features. So maybe these features are too limiting for you and you may want to explore paying for, for this integration because maybe it'll offer extra features that, that just this free one doesn't offer. But yeah, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you drop a like. And again, let me know if you have any comments, questions, or concerns in the comment section below. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one.